All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at factoring completely. Now that you've seen how to do the basic factoring using our diamond problem generic rectangle, and you've seen what special cases are and how they work, now we're gonna put everything together into a process we call factoring completely. If you are not proficient with factoring using a diamond problem generic rectangle, or you need to go back and look at our special cases, please go back to those lessons and see those first before you continue with this one. All right, as we look at factoring completely, we're given an, we're given an expression here, quadratic, the 3x squared plus 9x plus 6, and we're asked to factor this completely. Well, what does that mean? It means we need to pull out all the factors and separate this apart into the different pieces that multiply to get it. In order to do that, step number one says pull out the GCF. This step here is actually going to be the most important step that we always, always, always have to look for. All right, a lot of times students will miss that, they'll forget to do it, and it'll cause problems down the road. Always look for it. It doesn't always have a GCF, but you should always look for it. In this case, the GCF, the number that goes into three, nine, and six is three. I pull that out front. They do not have a variable that goes along with this GCF because our six, the constant at the end there, does not have a variable. This has no variable there whatsoever. So let's pull that 3 out and I ask myself, what times 3 is 3x squared? Well, 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times what is 9x? Well, 3 times positive 3x is 9x. And 3 times what is 6? Well, 3 times 2 is 6. What we essentially did was the opposite of the distributive property. If I were to distribute that 3 back in, I would get each of these original terms. All right? And that's what we can do to double check our work. Just look at it. Can I distribute that three back in to get the original expression? And yes, I can. Once this is done, now I wanna focus on factoring what's left over inside my parentheses. I wanna check, do I still have an x squared? Because if I don't have an x squared, as we saw in the last video, we're done. But if I have an x squared, I need to factor further. And I'm gonna use the methods that we've learned so far to do that. I'm gonna check x squared plus 3x plus 2, and I'm gonna see if it is a special case. All right, I'm looking for a special case here. Is it one of these three? Because if so, I can use it. And in this case here, I see that there's just an x squared. That means it's my just x squared special case, and I can use the shortcut from the day before to factor this. So if, I, if it's just x squared, I know that it's gonna be just x and x, and I just need the x of my diamond problem to solve it, where my product is two, because one times two would be two, and my sum is still my coefficient of x, which is three. And the two values that make this diamond problem work, which are two and one, are the same two values that we put into our groups. That's our just x squared shortcut. Now, is this the final answer? Well, no, I use step two. That means in this case here, I don't need to do step three here because I used my shortcut. It means I can jump right from there to my answer. But I need to include all the pieces in my answer and that means that I also need to include my GCF out front. So when I factor completely, I pull the GCF out front, factor the remaining trinomial, and now I have my factors of three, x plus two, and x plus one. Let's take a look at the next one. This one here, start by pulling out my GCF. My GCF, what number goes into 10x squared, 25x, and negative 15? It is five, leaving me with 2x squared, because five times 2x squared is 10x squared. Leaving me with plus 5x, because five times 5x is 25x. And leaving me with minus three, because five times negative three is negative 15. Now I look at what's remaining here, and I see if I can factor that further because there's an x squared still. I notice in this case, because of my 2x squared, 2x squared is not a perfect square number, therefore it is not a difference of squares, nor is it a perfect square trinomial, nor is it just x squared. It is none of those special cases because of that 2x squared. All right, so I can stop looking at that point, and I know I have to do this using my diamond problem and generic rectangle which I will then draw. My two by two generic rectangle and diamond problem. Fill in my x squared bottom left. Fill in my constant top right. 
multiply those two to get my product, and my sum is five. Well, if the product is negative, that means that I have one positive and one negative, and I can go through the options that multiply to get six to see what also multiplies to get five. And right, sorry, adds to get five. And in this case, right away, I see that one and six are indeed five apart. So if I had a negative one and a positive six, I would get a sum of five, giving me negative one x and positive six x. Therefore, I can pull out my GCF. Negative one is my GCF of that first row. 2x is my GCF of the second row. My first column, I've got x. And my second column, I've got positive three. Therefore, I go to my last step, write my factors, start with my GCF of five, followed by one group, it doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna go 2x minus one, and my second group, x plus three. That is my complete set of factors, and that's my final answer. Let's take a look at another one. All right, in this one here, what is the GCF between 3x cubed, 6x squared, and 45x? Well, the cubed should give you a big heads up that something's changed here. And what's changed is now I have an x in all three terms. So I need to look for what is the largest number that goes into all three numbers, 3, 6, and 45. That number is 3. And I need to look, do they all have at least one variable that's the same? Yes they all have at least one x. So I can pull an x out. I can't pull out more than one x because of this right here. There's only one x in that last turn, so pulling one x is all I can do. What remains if I pull out a three x? Well, three times one is three, and x times what is x cubed? Well, x cubed means I had three x's, all right? This was literally x times x times x, and I took one of those out and pulled it out front. So what's remaining? Well, I've got two x's that remain. In other words, x squared. So look at the next one. Three times what is negative six? Well, three times negative two is negative six. And x squared meant x times x, and I literally took one of those x's out, leaving me with one x. What times three is negative 45? Well, three times negative 15 is 45, uh, negative 45. And I had one x, but I took it out. So I have no x's that remain in that final term. All right, notice when I pull out the 3x, that's the reverse of the distributive property, so you could always double check your work. Is 3x times x squared 3x cubed? Is 3x times negative 2x negative 6x squared? And is 3x times negative 15 negative 45x? And yes, it is, all of those work, so I'm good to move on. Now I look at what remains. I see in this case here what remains I'm looking at this chunk right here. I notice my first one is just x squared. So that is this right here, which means I don't need to factor using dime prime and generic rectangle. I can use that shortcut. If you're uncomfortable with that, just go to the generic rectangle and dime prime. But I'm gonna see just x squared, and I'm gonna say that it's just x and just x, and it just needs the x of my diamond problem, where 15, negative 15, is my product, and negative two, is my sum. What multiplies to get negative 15? Well, that's gonna be a negative and a positive. Therefore, they have a difference of two, where two is the greater, uh, sorry, the negative number is greater because I have negative two left over. So I've got one and 15, negative 15, because the negative one is greater. Uh, those don't have a difference of two. I've got two, doesn't go into 15. I've got three and negative five, there it is. Three and negative five have a difference of negative two. Oops, sorry. Three and negative five have a difference of negative two. Therefore, those are my groups here. And I need to put my GCF out front, giving me my final answer of three X times X minus five times X plus three. Let's check one more example, just in case you want it. In this case here, we've got two variables, which is unique. It looks a little awkward at first, but if we pull out our GCF, you'll notice that what remains is something we can work with. What is the GCF here? Well, I see there's no number that goes into all three of those that's greater than one, but they do all have a common variable, y. All right, if I pull y out, I'm literally removing y from this top one here. So if I remove that, remove that, and remove that, I can see what remains. And it's gonna be x squared minus three x minus 10. 
I look at that and I say, all right, great. I factored that out. Now I look to see at what remains. I still have an x squared. Can I factor that further? Well, does it match any of my shortcuts? It does. It matches the just x squared shortcut. I'm going to go the, the, the generic rectangle dime problem route just for those of you watching this video that you're not comfortable with that just x squared shortcut yet. All right. But if I didn't see the shortcut or whatever else, I could still go generic rectangle and diamond problem, putting x squared bottom left, negative 10 top right, multiply those two to get negative 10, and it always adds up to my sum of negative three there. So I know it's gonna be a negative and a positive because it multiplies to get a negative 10, and I know therefore I'm gonna have a difference of three. So I look at one and negative 10 because my larger number is negative here because there's three negatives left over. Those don't have a difference three, so two and negative five, oh, there it is negative five and positive two. Give me negative five x and positive two x. And if I pull out my GCF, I get negative five x, x and positive two. Notice that this, this, and this all match. This, this, and this all match because that's what my just x squared shortcut is. It says if I've got just x squared, it's gonna start with x and x as we see here and here, because that's what multiplies to get x squared. And the coefficients of my x boxes are going to be what's pulled out on the side there. And that exactly matches what was in the diamond problem, giving me the exact numbers for my diamond problem in my groups. That's what the shortcut is for those of you that are still working on that. And so I put my GCF out front and I get my final set of factors, y times x minus five times x plus two.